and hit the subscribe button and hit the notification bar and hit the subscribe and hit the subscription ring ring oh. and hit the subscription bell notification bell oh see <laughs> i thought i got okay. the bell yeah, do it, do it, i got, got the bell hey guys welcome back to the channel tea is often associated with health in north america and for many people they started drinking tea because it's very healthy if you look up uh, benefits of tea you will find many promising and exciting results online many studies have shown that uh, tea has a lot of antioxidants it helps protect your bones reduces the chance of heart attack and stroke even battle cancers and more you can read about these topics from different studies online in google scholar for example however this video is not just a simple run-up of numeric data about tea leaves and health claims we're also gonna look at this health and tea issue from a different perspective traditional chinese medicine and uh, how this ancient wisdom look at uh, tea and health so please subscribe to our channel if you haven't yet and hit that bell so that you won't miss any of our future videos if you're interested in today's topic just keep on watching because today's topic is slightly technical i uh, wrote down all the notes all the key points and stuff i want to cover in the video to make sure i don't miss anything or forget anything so if you notice i'm not looking at you it's because i'm cheating with my notes for those of you who are not familiar with the tcm it is a traditional uh, medical practice in china with a thousands of years of history tcm and western medical science are not mutually exclusive from each other you don't have to choose between a or b they're explaining and answering the same things from different angles and um, different ways so imagine this like languages they have different sounds and uh, different grammar rules but it's not about right or wrong as long as the uh, result is achieved and uh, the messages is understood for example in TCM uh, color black is considered the color for kidney which is the key of youthfulness I know the uh, logic here is seem crazy from what we are familiar with but just go with it for now and eating something that is uh, black like a black sesame or black beans helps with your kidney which kind of uh, preserves the usefulness in your body in western scientific findings food with darker color usually contains a higher amount of anthocyanidin a potent antioxidant aka age defying so in the end we learn from both sides that eating dark colored food is good for our health even though the way we explain it was widely different talking about tea and health the most important thing is balance and integrate tea into a part of a healthy lifestyle just like any other superfood for example we all know kale is very healthy but if we get drunk every night smoke two pack of cigarettes every day and only sleep for two hours i don't think kale salad would help much so balance the whole picture of lifestyle is what matters rather than simply riding the trend of superfood so we feel guilt-free balance also means don't overdo the healthiest food but enjoy a wide variety of food celery juice is very trendy but uh, celery is a veggie that attracts slightly more heavy metal compared to some other veggies so if we consume excessive amount of celery juice every day and minimize our diet to only the healthiest food it might not be as healthy as we think but if we have a balanced diet a few sticks of celery with various different foods like some garlic or kelp which help our body get rid of heavy metals 
then there's nothing to worry about. So is tea healthy? If you consume a proper amount of tea and combined it with a healthy lifestyle, yes, tea is a great health boost. But if we drink 10 liters of tea a day, it will be an unnecessary burden for our kidneys, and that is not healthy. So what is the healthiest in tea? Well, what is healthier, carrot or broccoli? Among the six tea types, the less processed categories like green tea, white tea, or yellow tea tend to have more vitamins, um, amino acid, tea polyphenols, but the um, more processed tea types like oolong tea, black, or dark tea have more... Are you ready for this? Theoflavin, theorubigans, or theobronin, which are even more powerful antioxidant compared to tea polyphenols. So the oxidation or fermentation process of tea making is really not about reducing or minimizing the uh, health element, rather it is transforming them. So this is more like asking which is healthier, eat tomato raw or cooked, while for vitamin C, we eat it raw, but if for lycopene, we'd better cook it with oil. But seriously, why do we have to choose only one? We can always rotate different teas unless you have a strong preference. One of the most asked questions about tea is caffeine. Camellia Sinensis Tea House did some analysis on caffeine content on various of uh, brewed teas of theirs and share the results online. I'll put the link down below and you can check it out. It's very great of them to share this and uh, it really benefits us all. The most important thing is it busts some myths about like black teas has the most caffeine. But if you have a closer look at the table, you also notice the results seem to be all over the map. Like green tea can have low or high caffeine content. So is there any like rules or patterns about this? Yes, but it's slightly complicated. There are many factors that affect the caffeine level in the tea we drink. The environment where the uh, tea plant grows, like the climate or the altitude, uh, the cultivar of the tea, the season of the pluck, different parts of the tea plant also have um, different uh, caffeine levels, how the tea was processed uh, affects the caffeine as well, and how it was stored plays a part too. And of course, how we brew it also decides how much caffeine we put in the liquor. So here are some tips to help you get a rough idea of the caffeine level in your tea. For example, uh, big leaf cultivars usually has higher uh, caffeine level compared to small leaf cultivar. So if we just talk about the cultivar itself, Pu'er has more uh, caffeine than green tea, which are usually made with the small leaf cultivars. The higher the altitude of the tea garden, the less caffeine the tea will have because caffeine kind of act like a natural pesticide for the plant itself. And higher altitudes seem to have less pest hassles, so there will be less caffeine in the leaves. Also, within the same tea plant, the buds tend to have more uh, caffeine compared to the lower parts of the plant, like the uh, mature leaves or stem, which bring green tea back to the top of the caffeine billboard. The process is another big factor that affects the caffeine level in the tea leaves, especially those long and slow roastings, which greatly reduce the uh, caffeine concentration. That means some uh, oolong teas, black teas, or even white teas can be quite low in caffeine. And the traditional process for many teas contains this roasting step. Fermentation is another step that could transform caffeine. And that's why Shu Pu'er is often considered a really calming uh, nighttime tea. But studies also find that wet storage could increase the caffeine content in the leaves while the uh, dry storage reduces it. And when we brew the tea, we can lower the water temperature and shorten the uh, steep time. This will bring less 
caffeine to the liquor, but at the cost of getting less nutrition out of the tea too. So, are you feeling dizzy yet? An interesting thing I want to point out from Camillus Nassus analysis is that you might notice that there are two Longjing teas have different caffeine concentrations.、Uh, as we get to know tea,、uh, there are six different types of tea, and also when you are more advanced, you realize even green tea there are so many types of green tea. So, even talking about Longjing or Tie Guanyin. It really doesn't lock down to a specific tea. There are many grades and makes or versions of tea, and different stores might have a Longjing or Tie Guanyin taste or look differently. So、uh, the analysis table is definitely very helpful to help us map out the different levels of different teas. But don't get overly obsessed with the number itself, like. Liuan, not all Liuan Guapian has 60 milligrams of caffeine, and not all Shu Puar has 25 milligrams of caffeine. If you have a caffeine concern, drinking tea is definitely better than coffee. Besides the statistically lower in caffeine level compared to coffee, tea also has a unique element called L-theanine, which counteracts the effect of caffeine. Reducing the uncomfortness that、uh, caffeine brings, L-theanine also works with caffeine to enhance the mental concentration and the reaction. That's why some people have tea and feel it's calming and mind clearing rather than fidgety. However, I find that、uh, everyone's body reacts to caffeine quite differently. The same tea could causing some people having sleeping problems might not register. On others of、uh, caffeine radar, so if for some reason you cannot fall asleep easily after having some tea or coffee, here's a great tip for you: just gently massage between your eyebrows and bring it to the hairline, and repeat it. I can usually put Phil to sleep within five minutes after being repeatedly awakened by his turning and tossing. And this works great for those who have sleeping problems, especially the main symptom is having problems falling asleep. Tea and weight loss is another hot topic. Many studies have shown that、uh, the antioxidants in tea, such as EGCG, theobromines, or theobromine, prevent body from absorbing fat and promote the breaking、uh, breaking down of fat cells. But why do people say that I drink a lot of tea and I didn't lose any weight? Well, it's like exercise help lose weight, but it has to work with the proper diet and lifestyle. Those things are always intertwined. We cannot just pick one and ignore the rest and ask for an absolute result. So adding tea to your routine while trying to lose some weight would definitely do you some good. Then, what tea do I recommend for those of you who are trying to lose some weight? Dark tea. From a historical diet perspective, dark tea works wonders helping digest meat. Dark tea has been vital for nomads throughout history, and a nomadic diet is heavily relied on meat and dairy. There's a saying about nomads that they can do three days without food, but not even one day without tea. That's why there's the famous. Tea horse road, and from today's view, tea and horses seems to be luxury items. But at that time, tea and horses are strategic necessities for both sides. So definitely try some dark tea for weight loss. And there's a very effective point on your body that you can massage regularly to help with weight loss too. The Fonglong point. It adjusts metabolic issues, help regulate blood sugar and blood pressure, and you can massage this point at home easily when you are watching YouTube or reading books. Remember, this point needs a strong stimulation, but of course within your own tolerance. You might have heard many benefits of ginseng, but in TCM we have a saying that ginseng kills people without being blamed. This points out that when consumed at the wrong situation, even the good stuff can harm our body, and this applies to tea too. 
TCM categorizes things into a spectrum from a uh, cold, cool, neutral to warm and hot. And those are not literal temperature, but properties. And our body state can be categorized as such as well. Neutral is considered the best, the healthiest state, but it's also very normal that we have some imbalance in our body. And by adjusting our diet or habit a little bit, we can help bring the body back to neutral. And this is where tea can assist us. If your body shows signs of a cold, eating something warm would help bring our body back to balance. Some signs that show your body might be slightly leaning towards the cold signs are feeling cold easily, would like to dress more, um, prefer some warm food rather than iced beverage, or even salad could be hard on your body. And sometimes some subconscious movement like always cross our arms in front of the body is a sign too. So in those cases, having some black tea or deeply oxidized and roasted oolongs, uh, fermented tea like shupuar or some aged teas, those teas are considered more neutral to warmer properties and is great for people who have a cooler body state. But if your body shows symptoms of heat, having some food with cool properties is what you need. If you suffer from bleeding gum, even though you're flossing regularly or always craving for food, um, some nosebleed or some acne in the forehead area, try some green tea, white tea or green oolong. Those would help ease your symptoms. So we talk about some burning topics about tea and health from different perspectives. If you find this information helpful, please give us a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Let's have a healthy lifestyle, drink some tea and be happy. Till next time, keep steaming. Tea Filipino. <laughs> tea Filipino, I don't know why. Higher content of Antho. Anthocyanidin. Anthocyanidin. Okay, try that again. Anthocyanidin. L-theanine. 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 L-theanine.